Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do hear in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his home or in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, and when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land, it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to the widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman of the Syrian. When the people of the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which the town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through their midst, the midst of them, and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, in the Gospel, we see the reaction to truth that many of us have that people expressed towards Jesus. They saw the glam and the glamour and all that. He spoke well of this and that. But when he spoke the truth, he brought the vigor of people, the anger, the defensiveness, to the point where they wanted to kill him for saying the truth. And I think that's present in our world as well in today's age. When the truth is out there, people don't want to change their opinions, change what they know. And in the truth, there's a lot to learn. Scripture is one of that great producer of the truth. It's that Jesus Christ is a person. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's one thing that we won't, two things we won't get over, right? Death. We'll meet Jesus Christ there as the truth. And taxes, the federal government. But the point is, is what is Jesus showing us in the gospel today? He's showing us that he would bear all things. If we look at the change that Jesus had to make when he preached the gospel, when he went into towns and villages, what did he do? He saw the suffering and he healed them. He even raised the dead. He would cure diseases of all kinds. And he loved the people to such a degree that he suspended natural law and brought the supernatural to bear on them so that they felt that love of God. What a beautiful thing. But in the Gospels, his love changes. He departs from the crowds. He speaks only to his disciples. And then he speaks about what's to come. And his love changed into what? Self-sacrifice. He bore all things through love. He knew that he wanted to set that infrastructure of the spiritual life in our lives. And what he did is he created once and for all in time and space, one sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins for all of us. And those of us that were baptized in that font, in the baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have that promise of eternity and that promise of the forgiveness of sins. If we will humble ourselves to ask for his mercy. That's the beauty. Now when we look at what's talked about in love, let me flush this out a little bit. Because 
When we love, we often get struck in the heart. Someone does not accept that love. Oh, I want you to love me this way or that way or love me with conditions. You'll love me if you do this or you do that. We put conditions on love. Christ never did that. And even love will bear many things. Even, you know, if you talk to the wives in this parish, you will know that love bears all things because husbands, you got your faults, right? And ladies, you got your faults too. So in marriage, love bears all things. The struggle that we go through in life and the people we have around us, we love them. We, we adore them. They are people that God put in our life and that's so important. And we will forgive a lot to the people that we love. But what about the stranger? What about the enemy? And that's what we hear about in the first reading. God's basically saying, what are you afraid of? I consecrated you. I gave you the anointing of my spirit. Why are we afraid to love? We're all afraid, afraid to get rejected like Christ did. And that rejection is in our mind and our heart all the time. But he's saying, I will redeem you. I will hold you up. You will be this tower, this fortress that I will create through my presence in you. But still we're afraid. When we hear that truth, we get defensive and we strike against it. My brothers and sisters, love is simple. It is that self-sacrifice in nature. It is that kindness, that beauty, all of those things that we have in marriage, even our children who are coming up into the world, sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, this generation is so crazy, I don't know how they're gonna make it. Well, you guys said that about my generation. And here we are, right? So the thing is, is generation from generation, how do we love? Our love has to change. We can't love a three-year-old like we love a 17-year-old. That love changes. How do we develop in that? Only through the grace of God and accepting His love can our love change with that through the season of our lives. And then we bear all things. And we do all things through love. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, today you receive that love in the Eucharist. You receive God's love, His presence in the world for you. Receive that and ask for what you need. Do not be afraid to love, but know that love bears and conquers all things. Let us stand in prayer.